Hey everyone, this series is going to be all about the socially contentious topic of conspiracy theories. What are they? What makes people believe in them? And are they true? While conspiracies do occur, the trap of conspiracy thinking can be debilitating in many ways, such that we begin to spot ordinary or chance events as all part of a perfectly orchestrated conspiracy. In this first video, I want to quickly discuss some definitional issues and then dive into the published research in social psychology that examines the question of why people tend towards conspiracy thinking. So what is meant by the term conspiracy theory? Well, there are a few definitions used by different people, which are often adopted for reasons that suit a person's particular ideological narrative. A common definition is an explanatory hypothesis that alleges the organization of two or more people acting in secret to plot against the best interests of others. However, in popular culture, as well as in the social psychology literature, the term conspiracy theory has come to commonly refer to any alternative and unsubstantiated explanation of a particular event that accuses people of plotting against others. This latter definition is the definition I'll be using in this series. These features, secrecy, the involvement of two or more people acting, the goal-oriented actions that harm others, and lack of substantiation are all necessary features of conspiracy theories. Again, to be sure, conspiracies do occur, but I'll refer to those simply as proven conspiracies, whereas the unsubstantiated explanations that contradict the bulk of the evidence will be referred to as conspiracy theories. Granted, these are not perfect labels, and they come fully charged with provoking emotional responses in people. But I don't think we can dispose of the conspiracy theory label as it describes a very particular type of thinking. Even more pronounced and extreme are what I'll call grand conspiracy theories, which are simply conspiracy theories that posit large groups of people orchestrating very complex events that require a near impossible level of precision to pull off without anyone noticing. Except the conspiracy theorists, of course. It is these types of conspiracy theories and this type of conspiracy thinking that I want to explore here. Many, perhaps most, of the popular conspiracy theories out there are of this type of grand conspiracy magnitude. Needless to say, I hope, the grander the scale, the less likely that a conspiracy could be pulled off without error. This video will not discuss whether particular conspiracy theories are true or not, but rather discuss the social phenomenon of conspiracy thinking in terms of its features and what causes people to believe in them. So let's get into it. Conspiracy thinking is a common subset of denialist thinking which I discussed in the previous series. There are many common features of this particular type of denialism. First, there's malign intent. Conspiracy theorists will often refer to the, quote, official explanation, alleging that the mainstream story is a lie and part of the conspiracy. The official explanation should really be called the evidence-based consensus. Next, there's the alleged hyper-competence and power of the conspirators, discounting the possibility of accidents occurring. Then there's the significance of events details and grandiosity. Conspiracy thinking also tends to lack positive evidence and is more based on anomalies and negative evidence, which often is related to shifting the burden of proof and argument from ignorance fallacies. And lastly, conspiracy theories are often self-insulating and unfalsifiable. Everything is part of the conspiracy, is the general idea here. 
including the disconfirming evidence, which of course must be planted, which means there's no way the theory could ever be refuted. It's thus believed in like a dogma, one that can't be shaken in the believer's mind. So, who believes in conspiracy theories? Surveys between 2006 and 2011 on the American public found that half of the population endorses at least one conspiracy theory. Politically, extremism on both the left and the right and belief in conspiracy theories are highly correlated. There are relatively few demographic factors that predict conspiracy theory beliefs. However, African Americans tend to believe more in conspiracy theories and Hispanics and Caucasians less. These findings have been replicated several times. This pattern is even more pronounced when the conspiracy theory relates to a particular race. For example, there is a higher prevalence amongst African Americans to believe that there was a conspiracy surrounding MLK's death or the existence of HIV or AIDS. The likely explanation is that racial minorities have been discriminated against and have learned to distrust authorities more than usual. The single most predictive factor of whether you will endorse a conspiracy theory is if you endorse other conspiracy theories. If we review the literature on the types of personality traits associated with conspiracy thinking, we find three main traits. One, conspiracy beliefs in response to mild paranoia. Two, conspiracy beliefs as an externalizing tool. And three, conspiracy beliefs as a result of openness to new ideas. The first of these relates to low levels of interpersonal trust and the common belief that the world is generally getting worse. The second explains the reasons for why your life isn't as good as you want it to be. So people often externalize by positing a conspiracy. A high degree of powerlessness, low self-esteem, and dissatisfaction with life all correlate with belief in conspiracy theories. And the third the openness to new ideas and experiences correlates highly with belief in conspiracy theories. There is also significant correlation between the belief in paranormal ideas and conspiracy theories. To summarize, belief in conspiracy theories is associated with lack of interpersonal trust, distrust in authority, cynicism, belief that the world is getting worse, a sense of powerlessness, belief that events are beyond one's control, low self-esteem, the tendency to seek out groups to blame for negative events, and the openness to new and unusual ideas. We're not sure which way the causality goes, if any. These are correlations that have been noted and replicated across many studies. As discussed in the previous series on denialism, cognitive bias is one of the main reasons why humans form false beliefs. Conspiracy theories are no exception to this. In fact, there are four main cognitive biases that humans fall victim to that tend to dispose them towards believing in conspiracy theories. They are illusory pattern perception, the proportionality bias, confirmation bias, and the projection bias. The first is a type one error. We think we've seen something meaningful rather than randomness. Type two error is that there is something meaningful, but we see randomness. Almost every conspiracy theory commits a type one error. In fact, there's an evolutionary advantage to it. The lack of control increases the likelihood to see illusory patterns and thus commit this type 1 error. The proportionality bias is that we want big important events to have big important causes. It doesn't sit right with us to think that JFK's murderer was just one guy, 
yet we tend not to attribute the same nefarious conspiracy theory with the unsuccessful attempted murder of former U.S. President Reagan. Confirmation bias is one of the most common cognitive biases, which is when we seek to find information that confirms our prior beliefs and dismiss contrary information. This relates to conspiracy theories in a fairly obvious way. Those prone to conspiracy thinking will seek to validate their alternative explanations by typically only reviewing information sources that are supportive of their views, while either dismissing or ignoring contrary sources, or only reviewing contrary sources with the goal of refuting them. And the projection bias refers to the tendency to think that others have similar beliefs or attitudes as we do. This might seem surprising, but it's found to be a common bias at play amongst conspiracy theorists. There has been found to be a strong connection between those who would conspire themselves and the endorsement in conspiracy theories. They conspired because I would conspire, is the basic mentality here. All of these biases and traps in thinking will often converge to form what psychologists call a monological belief system, where conspiracies are perceived everywhere and anywhere and can explain anything. It's so dominating of an ideology that it even motivates some people to believe in contradictory conspiracy theories at the same time. This begs the question, how do we prevent conspiracy thinking? Simply educating people by providing correct information isn't enough because people are very good at finding a way to deny evidence when there is a clash between the information and their ideologies. What has likely found to be the best measure is a preventative one. We need to inoculate people ahead of time on the traps of conspiracy thinking. A meta-analysis of inoculation techniques has confirmed the benefits of this approach, though it is not without shortcomings. However, when the damage is done, inoculation is no longer possible as a preventative measure, and instead we need to focus on improving people's reasoning methods, getting them to understand the cognitive biases that drive this type of thinking, and proposing a more reliable alternative in terms of a skeptical approach to evaluating claims. In other words, getting them to question the metrics for how they've arrived at their beliefs is the goal. This is not easy. It's the point of this channel, after all. Now that I've gone over the features and causes of conspiracy thinking, let's look at some real-world events, both real, confirmed conspiracies and the baseless conspiracy theories themselves. Join me in the next two videos for some real-world applications.